Hey everyone, this is Jenny Street with Confessions of a Hairstylist, and I'm so excited because I have my boy here, Ricky, also known as Hair God Zito on Instagram, and we're gonna be doing a color and braid collab. So Ricky, what are you gonna be doing today? Today I'm going to be lifting her hair up to around a pale yellow. As you see, I have a perfect canvas. Thank you, Christina. And also I'd like to say thank you to the Butterfly Loft and David and Alexis for having us to be able to do this opportunity here. So I'm gonna be lifting her hair to around the inside of a banana a pale yellow, then I'm gonna tone her to a pretty silver, and I'm going to color her in watercolors. Cool, let's get started. First, I'm going to start out by putting my shadow root in. I always put a shadow root in at the base while I'm bleaching hair, because once you color it at the end, it makes it look a lot softer, you know? It's not as harsh, and it doesn't seem to stain their scalp as bad either. You want to wipe down and up because hair lies and you would think you have it all, but you do not. And second step, what we're gonna be doing is repeating the first. <laughs> Whenever you do get the baby hairs, you do wanna pay more attention and baby them because they like to fall off and get destroyed first. So normally I would drag, if her hair was, didn't have the baby hairs around her face, I would drag the bleach down as far as I normally do in the back. But since they are babier, I'd stay and baby them a little more. Not going as far down, because the hair, the color will come off them a lot faster and a lot quicker. So on your second application is when you want to run through them. Did y'all see how I noticed the hair was blonder around the face? So I pulled it out and then did it by itself so I don't cause no damage. See that blonde piece? So you just pull that out. After you color the roots, pull that out. Go back to that after you apply your bleach to the rest so you don't cause no damage. Bleaching hair is so much more visual than people take into account. They just want to slap the bleach on there when in reality, Bleaching the hair is the most technical part. Last section, whoop whoop. Make sure you go around and check the whole hairline. Making sure you ain't left nothing out or, or missed anything because a lot of people tend to forget the hairline. Done. <laughs> All right, here we go, round two. I uh, just lifted her roots, let them sit for around 15 minutes, made sure that I still see a pretty blonde in there and that it's ready to go to round two. I made a special concoction of shampoo, bleach, and seven volume, and I'm going to apply it to her hair damp. I do that to make sure it doesn't cause no damage and I just wanna break her seal pretty much so when I go to color it, that it sucks up the color well. I start in the back at the same sections that I was before and I'm going to spray them with a water bottle as I go. I'm not gonna go all the way to the end just yet, just enough that I make sure that there's no darker colors in the middle. So I'm gonna go to around mid shaft. And a lot of times since you, your hair, your, your bleach, it'll warm up around your scalp. So I will take that and drag it down. It kind of kills the bleach that's already on the hair. It just slows down the process and the warm bleach from her scalp will help activate faster through her mid shaft. I was only gonna go down to mid, but then I noticed you see that warm color in there? If you see that, it's just on the bottom, it looks like, you gotta go get it. All right, sometimes when I get up to the front, I don't spray as much water, you notice, and I'll, I'll spray it over dry. And then when I get down pretty low, I'll spray the water. 
and that's because this bleach hasn't been sitting as long in the front, so not spraying it with water doesn't weaken it as much. Second part, done. First, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Framar. The best tools on the planet. In reality, if I don't have their tools, I don't do hair. I use them for everything. I absolutely love them. Framar, Framar. <laughs> right now, I'm just running it through the ends. I'm, I'm gonna keep continue to drag it down, just making sure that the ends do have bleach applied to them. It's not that I go and smother them with bleach. I just wanna make sure it runs through so when I tone the hair, it looks even. Also, if you don't put bleach all over the hair and don't rough up that cuticle, it doesn't seem to grab Pravana as well. And I wanna show y'all this. You see that dark spot? After you bleach up, if you didn't wipe down on your first section with a stronger bleach, you'll see that. And the color that I'm trying to do is very light. So you gotta go get pieces like that. So what I do is I spread them out. See how it's lighter here, and lighter here, or darker here. I'm gonna flatten that out, look for the dark band, and then actually apply very heavily to it. Go back in, just dab that with your stronger bleach. Now that I have my bleach all applied, what I like to do is, the problem is, is this room is very cold. I know y'all can't feel that, but the temperature in the room can really affect how your hair bleaches up. Thank you, God Tang, for letting me know that. <laughs> All right, the best thing to do is to have your client go stand outside for about 10 minutes just to warm this up, make sure that it all gets in there well. And I'm not saying you have to do that every time. Sometimes you can use like a heating lamp or something like that, but being from where I live, it's hot, so utilize it. I'm going to be doing a five color melt which is going to just look so pretty on her. But um, also here's the colors that I'm going with. I took Blissful Blue and I added a drop of blue in it to give it a little bit more depth because her hair isn't as silver as I liked. Everything looks like it's going to cover perfectly but you never really know till you have it on the hair. So I like to take my colors and actually mesh them on a paper towel to see what they're going to do. All right, this is how we make a pastel yellow. Pastel yellows are hard to make because they tend to get very intense very easily. So to stop that, I like to use a lot of clear and I like to use the locked in yellow. The locked in yellow isn't as vibrant or as pigmented as the, as the other yellow. They say you're not supposed to mix locked ins and regular bivets, but what are rules for? To be the broken. And it looks like we're ready to start. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna section the hair into fours. I always do that just to simplify his hair color to me and that's how I think of my patterns. So what I'm looking at is I'm gonna start in the back at the very bottom. This color has five melts into it. So you definitely want to start at the bottom of the back to kind of perfect where the color is going to lay. If you start in the front, it takes you so long to get the distance right on these colors that you need to start in the back. So that way, by the time you get to the front, you're warmed up, ready to rock. Putting my dark shardo root in. I'm only going about an inch into the hair. I'm not bringing it down too far. I'm just doing it for a shadow roots. It's the whole reason I keep these roots out, to give it depth. Pink is actually a great one for that, for creating dark roots. Pink, blue, purple. When you're dealing with vivids, you need to work them in. When you think it's worked in enough, you actually work it in a little more. When you're doing this, you gotta make sure to wipe your hands very well in between each section because you, you can ruin a canvas real quick, overlapping and throwing colors down at the end that don't need to be there. Nothing makes me madder than that. I end up doing that all the time, so. 
If you notice, I adjusted my mixture too. I was bringing the paint down further, now I'm changing it up to make sure all my colors fit and I don't have to worry about them overlapping onto each other. Being this hair and then trying to get the right amount of color in each one and how it's gonna look, it's huge. It's, it's everything when it comes to coloring to me. It is not only about the colors you choose, but the placements of your colors. Anybody could slap color on the head. Who can make a piece of art? The main thing I'm evaluating while doing this is the distance. How much color do I need in each little panel to make sure that I can get my five and be even at the bottom? The other thing is, is she has some dark bands. So making sure that my color that I want falls on a dark band, making sure that it's able to cover. One of the other things that I do look for that I didn't say is I'm looking for which color just looks the prettiest on her hair? If I was gonna make a section a little bigger, which color that looks the best? And right now I'm thinking this blue is freaking gorgeous. So I'm gonna spread my blue out a little further than what I'm gonna do my mint and my yellow. When you get into doing your yellow, if you don't want to drab it out, when you put mint on anything, it automatically makes it drab. So when I'm doing something like my yellow at the end, I make sure and coat all the yellow before I go up and mesh that mint and yellow together. All right, what we're doing is I'm still coloring. Right now I done got to where I like my pattern and I like to, I, I got where I want my melts down. And the rest is kind of self-explanatory, just trying to stick with it. Now that we get to the front, we have this intense, intense melt going on. So the front is actually a lot shorter around the face. So you got to condense your section and making it also go shorter around the face. Sometimes I'll cut out a whole color, meaning is, is like that mint. That mint that I'm throwing in the hair is not the biggest deal. So when I get around the face, I will just go from my pink to my purple, to my blue, to yellow. You would rather cut out a color in the middle than coloring out a very, a color like yellow because when you see it at the end, yellow is gonna make a big statement in this hair. Right here, I had some random hairs just hanging. I kind of missed them from the front. So I'm just gonna coat them pink all the way because at the end when Jenny braids it, the more pink we have to fall into the bottom, the better it's honestly gonna look. So don't be afraid and don't just go try to melt this little baby section. You just go ahead and paint it all one color. Getting around the hairline is so important. It's so easy to miss little scragglers and that'll just ruin your color at the end. Remember I said I was gonna throw a straight piece of pink through. I normally would never do this, but since I'm working with Jenny and she was, she's a braider, then you need to throw some pieces of a solid color all the way through so when she braids the hair, it'll throw a different dimension into the braid. So coloring this one all the way pink just hurts my heart, but I gotta do what I gotta do. <laughs> All right, color done. You don't know how happy I am to take these gloves off. Gloves done. Now, only thing I'm gonna go through is we wipe up my base. You see this spot I missed? You see that? Very easily missed. And at the end, I would have been mad like neutered bull. One masterpiece. Just get a look at that. All right, I'm here with Christina. I got her hair done now. This is a five color color melt. It come out beautiful like My Little Pony. Let her see from the back. I mean, how beautiful is that, right? Now that I got my model done, I'm out of here for tonight. I'd like to say thank you to Jenny and thank you so much to the Butterfly Law for having us. I'll be back to see y'all maybe sometime in the South, right? <laughs>